History books are filled with the stories of brave men who fought in World War II. But as arts editor Jared Bowen shows us, a new exhibit at the International Museum of World War II is highlighting the stories of how vital women were in those war efforts. By 1942, the world was consumed by war. Men were dispatched to the battlefront. But on the home front, countries still needed a stable workforce to keep things running. So, for the first time in modern history, women stepped in to fill the gaps. I think for the women who went through this experience, they, it changed them. It changed the way they thought about themselves. Susan Wilkins is the director of education at the International Museum of World War II. Here, among the wartime weaponry, artifacts, and memorabilia, is a story often overlooked in American history books, the roles of women in World War II. It's often overshadowed by what men did during World War II, so we wanted to bring that story to the fore and give women the recognition I think they deserve. The role of women, I think, just wasn't appreciated in general. Kenneth Rendell is the museum's founder and director. The collection he's built over almost 60 years is more than military and might. It tells the human story of war. And I think the great unheralded role that women had in the war was holding families together, holding the home front together. In America, women stepped into a variety of traditionally male-dominated jobs and careers. This iconic image of Rosie the Riveter was meant to boost morale around the idea of the can-do woman. It was a start, but they also became the window washers, postal carriers, even garbage collectors who kept the country running. Here in Massachusetts, a women's defense corps was trained to counter enemies possibly reaching our shores. Their efforts were captured by legendary photographer Ansel Adams. His photographs show them pulling bodies from burning buildings, putting out fires, setting up mobile canteens to feed people who have been bombed out of their homes, providing medical care, operating radios, blackout wardens. Across the Atlantic, the British tried to make their war efforts downright sexy until critics demanded the picture of women in wartime be made more realistic. Even Princess Elizabeth was up to her elbows in work. She was trained as a mechanic. We have a photograph of her leaning into the hood of a, of a truck while her mother sort of looks on. The Soviet Union was the only country to actively conscript women into its fighting force. They served in the Red Army. They were pilots. They were bombardiers. They were snipers. They were even para-nurses. I didn't even know such things existed. While some German women were drafted to stand guard in concentration camps, the Nazis saw equal value in keeping women at home, encouraging them to focus on creating the next generation of leaders for the Third Reich. In the Liebensborn program, women were encouraged to have as many children as possible, even out of wedlock. These were a series of medals that were awarded to women who had given birth to a certain number of children. There were bronze, silver, and gold, and you got a gold if you had eight or more children that you had given, essentially, to the German Reich. But back in America, some of the toughest challenges came at the war's end. When the men returned home, most women were expected to give up their paying jobs and return to domestic life. But I think the seed was planted. I think they could speak to their daughters about what they did, about their experiences during the war. And so not surprisingly, it's a decade or so later that you have the, the women's movement. That was Jared Bowen reporting. Women in World War II on the home fronts and the battle fronts is on view now through October 7th at the International Museum of World War II in Natick. For more information, just visit Museum of World War II dot org.